What's up everyone, my name is Ale, welcome back to My World of Socks and welcome back to this little four part mini series on the channel where I rank every single dividend king stock in the market, let you know if I think any of them are worth investing in for the long term at today's prices as well. So it's a very fun series that we're doing here, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Now I do just wanna let you guys know I was a little sick since the last video and that's why it took so long for me to upload this part three here. But today is of course going to be part three out of four. I will upload part four very soon and then we'll be finished with this series and we'll move on to a bunch of other different stocks, uh, stock videos that I wanna do for you guys. But today is part three. We're gonna run through another 10 Dividend King stocks. We actually have some very popular names here that you're gonna be familiar with. So you're gonna wanna watch this one. And it's gonna be stocks number 21 through number 30. Now, if you haven't seen parts one or part two, where we covered the first 20 stocks, uh, I'll link both of those videos for you down in the description so you can catch up. But with that said, we got a lot of stocks to cover here, so let's do it rapid fire style. Let's run through these next 10 stocks right now. Okay, so we're back at it here with stock number 21. And for this one, we've got Tootsie Roll Industries, ticker symbol TR who, you guessed it, they are world famous for making and selling those Tootsie Roll candies that pretty much everyone in the world has tried at least at some point in their life, at least most people. But it doesn't stop there. TR also owns various other popular brands like Charleston Chew, Blow Pops, Dots, Andy's Mint Chocolate, and more. However, the issue with this company is that consumer interest has been shifting to more health conscious options over the years, while Tootsie Roll has really failed to innovate and move away from their high sugar candies. As a result, sales and profits have been sort of stagnant over the years, resulting in a very volatile stock that hasn't really increased much even after the past five years. Now, the dividend itself is a little tricky because they pay out both a cash yield of around 1% along with a stock yield of around 3%. So basically, they pay you that 3% in stock, and when you combine the two, you get around a 4% yield on the dividend that has been increased for 54 years in a row, which is pretty good. But with a PE ratio of almost 40, a stagnant business that relies on high sugar candies that people are caring less and less about as time goes on, and a stock price that doesn't seem to reward long-term investors by very much, I just don't know why anyone would want to own this stock. I can't really see a bright future with this company. And for those reasons, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give them the really bad ranking because I just know that I would never touch this stock myself. All right, now moving on to stock number 22, we've got Ormel Foods, ticker symbol HRL, who is pretty well known for their food brands, including Genio Turkey, Spam, Skippy Peanut Butter, Ormel Chili, uh, various sauces and ingredients, and even muscle milk, which kind of surprised me. Now, to be honest, these are not really high growth brands that will make you super excited about the business's future. And as such, both sales and profits are typically stagnant year after year. And while it is true that they are finally seeing some non-typical growth in 2021 and 2022, that was in large part due to their uh, recent acquisition of Planters Nuts, as well as the rise of inflation. And for me, I just think that the stock is a little too expensive at current levels. First of all, the stock itself has already climbed by about 50% over the past five years, reaching an all-time high, which is pretty large performance for what is typically such a low growth business. As a result, the valuation is now almost 50% more expensive than the rest of the sector. I mean, you could make an argument for it to be a little more expensive thanks to the dividend that yields almost 2% with double digit growth rate and 56 years of growth, but it's not enough to completely make up for the high price and analysts seem to agree with me as it currently trades higher than all the lowest estimates, the average estimate, and even the highest estimates. I can understand why some people would want to own this one long term, but it's not attractive to me personally at these current levels, so I'll put them in the average category for now. All right, next up for stock number 23, we've got Nordson Corporation, ticker symbol NDSN, who creates and sells mostly dispensing products for adhesives, coatings, sealants, and other types of solutions. So basically machines that will help you apply glue or coatings or sealants, all that type of stuff. Now it's a unique business, but it's also one that is heavily reliant on the macro economy because they essentially sell to other businesses that require their machines and those businesses will only really place orders for them if they themselves are growing, which is only gonna happen during a healthy economy, which 
we haven't really had recently, right? So as such, Nordson's sales and profits have been in decline for two years in a row until they finally saw a rebound once the lockdowns were starting to be lifted. Now, to be fair, though, Nordson has proven that they can withstand economic downturns as they've now increased their dividend for 58 years in a row. And even after all those years, it's still got some excellent growth metrics on it, like a double digit growth rate and super low payout ratio of just around 20 percent. However, my issue with the stock is that the dividend yield is too small at less than 1%. So if you're looking for any kind of significant gains over time, you'll probably need to get them from the stock price itself, which is actually possible since it's currently in the bottom half of its 52 week range. And yet it's still up over 75% in the past five years. So it's a pretty good performing stock, which makes me think that this might not be a bad one to own long term just for the stock itself. But the business is pretty boring to me, I got to be honest with you guys, and the dividend is too small to make up for that lack of excitement. So unfortunately, I'm going to rank them as average. I'm sure people would have some success with it. I'm sure people would enjoy owning it, but I think there's better, more exciting options out there, and I don't really want to own it myself. Okay, speaking of better options, though, for stock number 24, we have one of my absolute favorite dividend stocks in the entire market, and that is the Dividend King Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol j and who admittedly I do not currently own myself, but man, have I often thought about buying this one so many times in the past. And that's because J&J &J has a proven business lifted by some of the most popular household brands in the world, including Band-Aid, Neosporin, Tylenol, Theraflu, NyQuil, I should probably be taking some of these myself, uh, Listerine, Johnson's Lotion, Benadryl, Aveeno. They even have a V-Shot for the pepperoni that is expected to generate over $3.5 billion in sales just this year alone. I mean, the list of products and brands just goes on and on. But due to various lawsuits and bad publicity from certain products, the stock has been a bit suppressed and is only up by less than 50% in the past five years, despite trading at an all-time high. And the result, though, is a good valuation that is over 10% cheaper than the rest of the sector with a nice dividend of close to 2.5% that is more than safe with a low payout ratio and almost six decades of growth. Financially, this is a very stable, very profitable company that did almost $100 billion in sales and over $20 billion in profits just last year alone and is still managing to grow by a reasonable amount every year. I personally would like to pick it up on a little dip if I can get one, but overall, as a long-term dividend king stock, when I look at the complete picture of this one, I got to rank it as a really good option because I do think that I'll be buying this stock at some point later this year. It's a stock that I, I really believe I will be owning very soon. Okay, moving on to stock number 25, we've got Lancaster Colony, ticker symbol LANC, who is mostly a food company that owns brands like Marzetti and New York Bakery. Uh, many of their products are things like frozen foods and various sauces and dressings. But something that I found interesting is that they also produce sauces for giant restaurant chains like Olive Garden, Buffalo Wild Wings, and even Chick-fil-A. And I, I myself, I gotta admit, I buy that Chick-fil-A sauce a lot. It's pretty addicting. Anyway, to be honest, besides those main you know, sauces that are kind of licensed or whatever, uh, I haven't really heard of Lancaster's main brands. So it really surprised me when I looked at their financials and I found some pretty solid revenue growth year after year. And despite that, the stock is actually down over 20% from its highs and only up about 25% in the past five years. With that poor performance though, you would think that the valuation would be really cheap or the dividend would be really high, but that's actually not the case for either one. The stock trades over 50% more expensive than the rest of the sector and the dividend yield is just around 2%. It's nothing really exciting. Both the payout ratio and the growth rate are also middle of the road and that kind of sums up my feelings on this one. I love their financials, but I personally don't recognize their brands and the stock valuation and the dividend are not anything special to make me want to run out and buy the stock or I don't know, I guess just move it up on my watch list. It's, it's, it's just kind of a middle of the road. It's good, but nothing really special. I would say it's an average overall kind of stock. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, moving on to stock number 26, we've got a stock that I've always been interested in myself, and they are the main rival to one of my favorite dividend stocks in Home Depot, and that is the other home improvement retail giant known as Lowe's, ticker symbol L-O-W. But while they are extremely similar to Home Depot in so many different ways, 
I just think that Home Depot is the better option of the two as they not only pay a larger dividend yield, but they also have done a better job of adapting to the rise of online shopping by already commanding the fifth most market share in the US, whereas Lowe's doesn't even make the top 12 and I'm not even really sure where they're ranked at all because it's not listed here. To be fair though, when you remove the comparisons to Home Depot, there's actually a lot to like about Lowe's just on their own as they are still growing by low single digit percentages coming off of the gigantic growth that they saw during the pandemic where people have been spending more time and money at home and working on home improvement projects. And despite the stock itself being currently down almost a quarter of its value, it's still up over 130% in the past five years, while the dividend also carries some amazing growth metrics on it, like a tiny payout ratio, a huge growth rate of almost 18%, and almost six decades of consecutive growth. The only issue that I have though is that the yield is a little too low at just around 1.6%, and the stock valuation is too high, at over 20% more expensive than the rest of the sector. And when it's all said and done, I would rather buy Home Depot myself over this one. So I'm going to rank them as average because I just think it's a little too expensive at these levels. I would really like to see them drop a bit before I would be buying into this one. And like I said before, there's already a stock that I like more in Home Depot. So I can't really justify ranking this one higher, even though I kind of want to. But moving on to stock number 27, we've got a stock that is oftentimes referred to as recession proof because of how many popular household brands they own. And that is Colgate Palmolive, ticker symbol CL, who owns giant brands like Colgate, Tom's, Irish Spring, uh, Ajax, uh, Speed Sticks, Soft Soap, Palmolive, and they even own Science Diet, the, the pet food. As a result, their sales typically grow by low to mid single digit percentages every year. And that was even the case during the 2020 recession, although that was mostly boosted by panic buying from the pandemic. But I actually really like them as a company. My issue is more so with the stock itself as it's not only very slow moving, it's only up around 10% in the past five years. But despite the poor performance, it's actually around 30% more expensive than the rest of the sector too on a P ratio basis. I wish I could say that the dividend makes up for that, but with a yield of 2.3% with a <clears throat> tiny growth rate on it, it's just not a big enough dividend or high growth enough to make me feel like I'm going to get any kind of really large returns on this investment. For that reason, I got to rank them here as average. I think they're stable, but it's not something where I'm going to see huge gains from. Moving on though, we are now down to the last three stocks of the day. And for stock number 28, we've got perhaps the most well-known dividend king in the entire market, and that is Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, who's been, uh, they've really been made famous for not just because of their icon iconic brands like Coca-Cola, Body Armor, Powerade, Sprite, Dasani, Fanta, Gold Peak Tea, Honesty, Minute Maid, Simply Juice, Smart Water, Vitamin Water, so many others. But it's also famous for being one of Warren Buffett's largest investment for really decades. And speaking of decades, KO has grown their dividend for a monstrous six decades in a row and still yields over 2.7%. That's pretty good. But that's where I really think that the good news mostly ends, at least for me, as the payout ratio is already high at over 70%, hence why the growth rate on the dividend is so small at less than 4%. And even if you're hoping to get your gains through the stock price itself, well, that too might disappoint you as it's already trading at an all-time high and yet is only up around 50% in the past five years. And don't get me wrong, that's not necessarily bad performance, <clears throat> But there's definitely better options out there. I mean, you could have just put your money into the S&P 500 and still got much better returns at almost 80%. And that and that's also with the S&P currently trading closer to a 52-week low, whereas KO was trading you know, closer to a high. And speaking of better options, I'll just mention now that I'd much rather own PepsiCo stock over Coca-Cola since they're at least better diversified into more solid food snacks as well. Now, Coca-Cola will always be a profitable company as they're just too large to ever go under, and sales continue to tick up by a small amount in most years, with 2020 and 2021 being kind of counter exceptions because of the pandemic, but I just can't help but see them as a more kind of legacy middle-of-the-road type of business and stock, and for that reason, I'm going to put them as average here as well. There's a better option out there, in my opinion, in PepsiCo, and there's other stocks too that I think are also better. All right, we're now down to the last two stocks, and coming in at number 29, we've got Cincinnati Financial Corp, ticker symbol CINF, 
NF, uh, who unfortunately is a pretty boring stock, I would say. Uh, I promise the next one will be better. The, we're going to end the last stock on the list with a pre pretty good one, in my opinion. But this one here is mostly an insurance company that offers both property as well as life insurance. So this can include things like workers' comp, property, homeowners, auto, all kinds of different insurances. And that's in both commercial and also personal markets as well. <clears throat> It's definitely a profitable company, but the business can be a little volatile at times with sales skyrocketing in 2019, dropping in 2020, climbing again in 2021. They're expected to crash this year and then return to growth the year after as well. So it's a bit of a headache to keep track of, especially because it's not a very well reported on stock with very little analyst coverage, despite being a dividend king with over six decades of growth on a 2% yield with a low payout ratio, so not a bad dividend. But the stock itself is also just as volatile as their sales with a giant crash during the pandemic and then a huge surge coming out of it that now leaves them trading close to an all-time high with a valuation that is over 100% more expensive than, expensive than the rest of the sector. For me, it's too expensive, it's too volatile, it's not covered enough, and to be honest, it's too boring of a business for me personally to want to ever really invest in them. So for that reason, I'm going to have to put them at, in the really bad category. I just don't really like them that much. I don't know. Uh, finally, that brings us now to the last stock of the day. And coming in at number 30, that's going to be <clears throat> a stock that I actually own myself in 3M, ticker symbol MMM, who is the famous owner of popular brands like Post-it Notes, Scotch Tape, Scotch Bright, all sorts of auto care, industrial, office, cleaning, uh, electrical, safety, and even medical healthcare products, including, by the way, those heavily used face masks and, and respirators that have been selling like hotcakes during the pandemic. As a result, 3M has managed to maintain healthy profits every year. Growth is usually low, with 2019 actually being a down year, in large part due to lawsuits and bad publicity over certain products, but they still managed to grow by 1% in 2020 through the lockdowns with businesses closed down that they heavily relied on. And 2021 was a large spike as things opened back up, and here in 2022 and 2023, they're expected to return to that low single-digit growth again. <clears throat> The issue that I have with 3M is that they're not really innovative enough, in my opinion, to experience the large growth that you can typically get from smaller companies in the market. But with the stock already trading <clears throat> near a five-year low, down over 26%, and having wiped away almost all of its gains from the large growth that they saw in 2021, leaving the valuation around 20% cheaper than the sector, and the dividend very high at over a 4% yield with the, with over six decades of growth. I just think that right now is one of the best times to buy the stock. In fact, right now is one of the highest points for its dividend yield in all of its history. So with all those positives, but still some negatives to be aware of, I think 3M deserves the above average ranking. It's a stock I own myself, so you could say I'm biased, but I'm biased for a reason it's because I actually, you know, I like to own it. Uh, anyway, that leaves us now at the end of the video. So to summarize, we've got one stock in the really good category with Johnson & Johnson, one stock in the above average category with 3M. We had a huge amount of average stocks with six in total in Ormel, uh, Nordson, Lancaster, Lowe's, Colgate, and Coca-Cola. We had no stocks in the below average category, but we had two stocks in the really bad category with uh, Tootsie Roll and Cincinnati Financial. I think for me, Johnson & Johnson and 3M are really the only two stocks on today's list that I would feel confident investing in long term. I think you could do pretty well with some of the other average stocks on the list, but for me, I think that the best options would be Johnson & Johnson and 3M. Those look the most attractive at today's prices, and if I'm really thinking long term and I'm looking at the business, the valuation, the dividend, and looking at the entire picture, those are the ones that I like the most. But let me know if you agree or disagree. Would you make any changes to my rankings? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And make sure you stay tuned for part four. We're almost done with this series, and we got a few more stocks to run through. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Hope you're all doing well. Take care, and bye-bye.